Louisiana Beer Reviews, Moon Juice Galactic India Pale Ale, 7.3% alcohol, 65 bitterness units. This was sent to me by Mo in Arizona. Thank you, Mo. We can't get their beers here. Um, this beer has been on the market for 10 years, since 2014. And it, well, the date's not the greatest. It's not super fresh. Let's see. Um, Well, it's still less than three months old, 7.3, canned, 65 bitter units, eh, it'll be all right. Galaxy and Nelson Solvent are the hops. And this says Southwestern Style Ales, Chandler, Arizona. I didn't know where Chandler, Arizona was. I looked it up on a map. It's probably about 10 miles southeast of uh, Phoenix. Phoenix, Tempe, and then Chandler. So it's right off of Interstate 10. And Interstate 10 runs past this town, so I could go out there, get on Interstate 10, head west, and take the exit for this brewery and check it out. Now I would only have to make one right turn. You know, the exit, maybe, if he turns off. Straight shot. All right. And it's also where U.S. Highway 60 comes in, right around there. Uh, that can, you can take that from, I think, South Carolina. I know it goes to the Atlantic Ocean, the beach there, like literally almost the, be the beach. Get west, start heading west on 60. U.S. Highway 60 will take you right there, almost to the brewery. Okay, anyhow, um, white head, uh, translucent yellow-orange appearance, not clear. Uh, it's not super hazy, but it, 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 there is an opaqueness to it. Um, it's a hazy day. It's a very warm day, and it's heading towards hot. It's going to be a hot spring day here in Louisiana in the, probably the mid-90s. All right, so... I've been to Phoenix once, really. Well, maybe like twice, once driving through, or twice driving through, but once visiting it, I went there to see the... Uh, Arizona Diamondbacks baseball team and they were playing the Angels actually in that game interleague game so uh, it was very nice and um, that was in 2006 and I went there my, my first cousin once removed went there with us his wife and the son Bryce um, they weren't really interested in it they they follow football a little bit but uh, baseball they they just went to be nice I don't know why they needed to go but they wanted to just to, I guess to see the stadium but um so they were kind of like tolerating the game I was enjoying it we had a ticket special that night you got uh, if you bought four tickets they were four dollars a piece <laughs> you had to buy four but so it worked out because we had four people so what a deal huh and we ended up parking for free we didn't pay to park we just parked down the street Walked was easy. It was easy. Okay. Then the next week I went to see the Angels on a Monday. And I had to, the ticket was $8, believe it or not. Some of these slow days you can get deals, you know, because um, people would have to work the next day and stuff. And, they figure if they don't sell any ticket, that the seat isn't going to be resold again. That day won't exist again in the future, so they may as well get eight dollars, and then you might buy thirty dollars worth of trinkets and concessions, right, or more. So, and then I had to pay eight dollars to park, so it was still a great deal. And I noticed there was an Amtrak train station right across the parking lot in Anaheim, and that was a heat wave that week. <sighs> It was 101, I think, every day. It was sweltering that night in that stadium. The Dodgers game on that Sunday, the day before, it was like 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was like 101. Oh, that was sweaty. Okay, enough of that. Reminiscing. Um, it's It's got a little fruitiness. It's got a lot of white bread, like typical IPA white bread white bread crust, a lot of fruitiness, uh, or some fruitiness, 
some hop resin. All right, so does it smell like any other IPAs I've had in the, in the past? Um, good, didn't spill. Uh, no, can't think of any that it smells like, so it's unique. All right, taste, shows. I like that good bitterness. It's not just a fruit bomb, a fruit salad bomb, a juice bomb. It's a good, bold. 2014, that's around the time when things start to change, right? Transition, but uh, the good, bold bitterness. 7.3, I mean, I'd be happy if it was 73 I'd be used, you know, but I mean, 65 is fine. It's these these IPAs, so-called, they got 35 IBUs, 39, 40. It's like, yeah, right. it tastes like a just a pale ale. I don't know about the India part. Good, good mellow bitterness. If you are reluctant to try this because you think it's going to be bitter and harsh, hard to take, it's none of those things. Medium bodied dry finish sweetness scale good I wish it would get cloudy keep down the heat but the humidity is unreal it's like you're wearing it it's like you're in a steam bath honestly that's how humid it is um I'm surprised the camera didn't fog up um it's a pretty dry beer I mean I would say two out of five sugar cubes, maybe. Maybe it's that high. That's questionable. Bitterness, yeah, four out of five hop cones, four out of five hop cones. It was pretty bitter, but in a pleasant way. Some beers are bitter in a nasty way. Like somebody described about 10 years ago, fleshy hops with that old Voodoo Ranger. Not the Voodoo Ranger, sorry. New Belgium Ranger IPA. There was a Ranger and then there was like an extra strong Ranger and they were like, Ugh. they were sort of unpleasant. And it must be true because they got rid of it. <laughs> oh, every now and then they'll bring Ranger back and that other one, it was like double Ranger or something. But, uh, but they don't, uh, people just, I don't think people liked them too much. Why would they replace it if people were just buying it like crazy and in love with it? And then you got the torpedo from Sierra Nevada that's bold, strong bitterness, but it's pleasant. It's not the fleshy hops, and you don't sip it and be like, ugh, you know. Now, the Voodoo Ranger, 7%, and the hazy, juicy, 7%. Those are nice, mild, pleasant. Uh, Imperial IPA from Voodoo Ranger is nice, so smooth, so enjoyable. Now, I can't say too much positive about all their little, you know, funny bunny silly billy ipas that they put out you know like one's supposed to taste like fruit punch the other one tastes like bubble gum or chewing gum those are you know i don't know they just putting it out there just say put anything out there see if they buy it you know people like all that candy taste i guess they do you know i see them all at walmart there's one every week comes out new one every week you know something cashmere and miami vice and Vice Squad and Undercover Cop and all of these other ones and they they're pretty dreadful, you know, really when you think about it all the way. But um But if you like fun and games with beers, you know, like don't take it too seriously and you could, you could deal with those, like taste like fruit punch. It's sort of like a joke and like they're saying like I think their approach is like, yeah, it's a joke and a joke's on you, <laughs> you know. But this company is, isn't kidding around. Their can art, no, uh, it's okay. That's another topic for another video. You know, beer label art. A lot of it is uh, questionable to say the least. Um, this one is all right. You know, it's just a cartoon, a guy planting a flag with a hop on it, astronaut in some futuristic galactic 
clown shoesian type of feature, but yeah. I wouldn't be attracted to these beers by the can art, I'm gonna be honest, but um I, I don't I don't care I don't ultimately I don't really care about that kind of stuff, but um it's something I notice. I don't care about it but I notice it, you know. Sierra Nevada always had some of the best, still do, can art, bottle art. Anchor used to, and then they went to that new streamlined design that definitely did not attract a single new customer and may have alienated some of their fans. Didn't bother me. Thought it was all right. But that was, um, you know, there was other, other, other more serious problems in that company's uh, turbulent late history. Well, really, earlier history was turbulent. So anyway... It's just a memory now. They put down their anchor in the graveyard. Um, Santan, been around since 2007. Their distribution is obviously extremely limited, as evidenced by the few videos available for each beer, and in some cases, no videos available for any of the beer. But there are a few for this one. There are some written reviews. Now, like one of them I tried, I think it was the Orange Little Alien. They didn't even have written reviews on Beer Advocate. None, nothing, and barely anything on Untapped. So, yeah, so they're kind of small. I don't care. If it tastes good, that's what it's going to get a good score. And their beer is so far, so far, so great. Like, no joke. They're not like pretty good or they're, yeah, it's pretty nice. No, these are like really really good great even so if this is any sign and and their website has an amazing array of beers i'd love to try them all mo thank you because i never heard of this company i never would have seen their beers aside from a road trip to arizona which is definitely within the realm of possibility but um i know they have bottles versions it's kind of like St. Arnold. I mean, they make some profoundly great beers. And aside from Louisiana and Texas, eh, it doesn't look like too many people can get their beers. And, um, they're really missing out. I mean, for the most part. There are some. Well, any beer company is going to have a few uh, ha-ha. Let's call them failures. But uh, generally, St. Arnold is solid as a rock, you know. And um, they have fabulous products. Um, it, it might be the case with Carbach, too, that, you know, we're getting Carbach, Carbach, well, not really so much in Louisiana, but a little bit here and there, you know. In Texas, yeah, everywhere, of course, but, uh, man, they got some really nice stuff, like uh, Rodeo Clown, Yule, Shoot Your Eye Out, Kid, Christmas Ale. I mean, those things are fabulous, really. Yeah, uh, I just think they didn't stay on the shelves too much around here. There's, there's too much shelf competition in Louisiana with the local brands, some of which are good. And um, then you have the overall craft beer decline, the relative decline in craft beer. So now a lot of these beer outlets are trying to figure out what they're going to do. Like they, I know their store manager's like, this stuff just sets on the shelf. It does not move. Like I had one approach me unsolicited and bring that up. It does not move. <laughs> now they bring it in THC and THC and cannabis beer, uh, not really beers, but, you know, beverages. And somebody said, when are you going to try those? I said, never. Oh, a whole section, big. But now Louisiana's about to outlaw it. I think they're going to um, they're gonna make that disappear, probably because of some Puritan ideology and also probably because of craft beer companies undercover soliciting the state legislature to outlaw it because they, they can't definitely afford any competition at this point so anyway thank you i'm going to score this a solid 94 out of 109.4 out of 10 a most excellent ale from an obviously most excellent company san tan thanks again mo i can't thank you enough and i'm going to end this review by saying y'all go to chandler chandler arizona and take a brewery tour